You know, my stage name is Sky Tunes. Sky is my birth name, but you know when you're little and you hear songs and you always like replace I with your name? Well, I replaced I with Sky. So then when iTunes came about, I was like, Sky Tunes. Mm. So I'm not gonna pay Apple for that, but yeah, that's my name. <laughs> now, why did your parents name you Sky? You know, I always ask my mother, I'm like, were you high when you named me? Why'd you name me Sky? But she said there was a character on uh, General Hospital that I guess her name was Sky on the show, so that's why she named me Sky. And it was different, so my sisters have weird names too. <laughs> now, you incorporate your, uh, your part of your real name with your stage name. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't. Uh, why do you? Why make that decision there? I kept my name just because it's me. Um, I feel like in life, or in the industry rather, the only thing that can separate you from somebody else is being 100% yourself. Um, my belief is so strong that God made us all different. So I don't want to just be faking a name and faking my image and faking, you know, no shade to anybody that does have a, a fully different stage name from their birth name. But for me, I just wanted to, you know, I like my name. I think my name is, is kind of cool. So I think Sky is pretty dope. So I just added on to it. I didn't really want to just completely go left with my name. So the actual uh, Sky Tunes, that's something you came up with or somebody kind of put together? And No, 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 no. I came up with Sky Tunes myself. Ah, I yeah, see. Yeah, I came up with Sky Tunes. Um, I've always, like, before I used to call myself Sky Away, like Fly Away, and then I was like, that's cheesy, that's corny. So then when I found out about iTunes, I was like, I'm a singer, I play piano, I'm in theater, like, Sky Tunes is dope. So I kept it. I see. <laughs> now, this other name you had, was that a stage name too, or that's just a name you were thinking about using? That was just something I was thinking. Sky Tunes okay. is my, first I just used Sky, and okay. then um, I changed it to Sky Tunes. It's been, since MySpace was around, so it's been, I've had Sky Tunes for a very, very, very long time. Why not just Sky, too plain? It's not the sky is plain, but there are other, I think there's a, an artist, Sky Sweet Nam overseas that has the name. Uh -huh. um, there are a couple other girls in the U.S. that have that name as well. So um, before my label, before Empire actually came to me and they said, are you just going to go with Sky? Because, you know, there are like eight people with that name. And I was like, no, I'm actually going by Sky Tune. So um, the, the reason for it, me not using my real name, is because it's already out there. It's already used. So I just added on to it. And the way you spell Sky in your stage name, that's how it is on birth certificate? Mm -hmm. S-K-Y-E is on my birth certificate. I it's see. on everything. <laughs> now, uh, my next question to you is, now, when some people are uh, stuck with a name, for lack of a better phrase, and they've been branding themselves as that for a while, significant length of time, you know, they, they feel stuck in that name or whatever. But deep down inside, sometimes people, even though they're known for the stage name, they secretly wish they could go under a different name or be a different name. Do you ever feel like that? Ever have that, that thought? Even though I'm Sky Tunes, secretly I wish I could change my name to this. I mean, I'm, I'm not, but it's just a, a feeling. No, I, wouldn't, I don't ever secretly wish my name could be anything different. Like I said before, I think Sky is really, really dope. Um, I, I've always loved the phrase, sky's the limit. Mm. I have so much that I wanna do, um, so much that I'm doing. And I think Sky Tunes is even doper because it's like, it's music. It's still within the realm of what I'm doing, what my passion is. So um, to be honest with you, I'm a little cocky about my name. I think my name is like the dopest one out there. <laughs> and it's easy. It rolls off the tongue very, you know, very easy, very clear. It's not something that somebody's got to look in a dictionary or try to figure out like what it is or why. It's just Sky Tunes. So I like it. I like that it's simple and I like that it's authentic and I like that it's, you know, it's really my name too. So it's me. Now, what is your ethnicity? My ethnicity? I'm black. Um, I have never met my father, so I really don't know. But my mother is black and Italian, so that's, that's all I know. And she was also adopted. So for me, I can't really tell you exactly what I am because mm. I don't really know. Now, do people guess what you do know? Do people guess this when they meet you? Do they think you're something else when they meet you? When people meet me, they normally say, are you Irish? Do you have Irish in you? Because I have freckles. Or they say, are you Creole? And I'm like, well, I lived in Houston. I'm from Houston, but I don't know because I was adopted. So um, they normally assume that I'm mixed with something. Nobody's ever like, oh, she's just a black girl. But to me, I was raised in a black home. Um, so I just say black. But I do know that my mother is black and Italian, 50-50. So. Do you speak any other languages aside from English? 
you know, not fluently. I don't speak anything other than English very well. I can understand Spanish. Um, living in Los Angeles, as I do, I am around a lot of Hispanics, a lot of things that are in Spanish. So I can comprehend, but I can't speak it fluently. Um, I did take French in school, so I can kind of read, like, if I'm at a French restaurant, I know what I'm reading, but I can't just, like, spit it out to you. Mm. I also took Swahili, <laughs> but I can't, I can't read that, and I don't understand that very well. I think I know, like, one phrase, Jumbo Rafiki, Rafiki Jumbo. It's like a friendly hello. <laughs> That's so cheesy. <laughs> now, my next question to you is the subject of racism. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout your life, did you face any obstacles being black in America? Being black in America is definitely um, one of the most privileged things for me. I, I wouldn't even say it's an underprivileged thing, but it was also one of the most difficult things to face. Um, the reason I say that it's one of the, I feel like I'm privileged to be black, our culture is everything. Um, we invented almost pretty much everything. I'm proud of it. Um, I went to a predominantly black school. I lived in Third Ward of Houston, Texas, the pre predominantly black neighborhood. Pretty much, I think it's all black. Um, and then growing up and traveling as I did, going to other states where it's not so black, I had to face, some people were super nice to me because they felt like I was mixed. So they're like, oh, she's, you know, She's one of us. And then I also faced it from other black people because they felt like, oh, she just a light skinned girl. She half white. Oh, she da da da. And I'm like, I'm not even half white. Not that I know of, you know. So growing up in America, being a black woman, being a black girl, it's been rough. And some people like to argue us down and say, oh, that's that's the past. It doesn't exist anymore. But I stand here today to say, I mean, look at Colin Kaepernick. Look at all the things that we're facing today. Um, our number 45, I mean, you know, it's, it's terrible. And I don't know that it'll ever fade away. Um, it's a lot of hate that I had to face. And it's not just from, I don't wanna just put it on whites. You know, it's not like just white people or hate black people. I've experienced racism from Hispanics. I've experienced it from Asians. You know, it comes from everybody. and It, it just sucks. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm a super religious person, but very spiritual. And I just felt like God made us all one and made us all equal. And I wish I could do something or I wish I had the recipe or remedy to change it, but I don't. So I just have to, you know, keep blending and keep convincing other people as I come in, you know, in contact with them that blending and, and not judging someone because of the color of their skin or what you think they are a monkey or whatever is, is not cool. You know, we're all the same. Was there a worse incidence of racism that you faced? I mean, you have felt this uh, feeling uh, several aspects of your life, as you mentioned, several instances. Mm -hmm. But has there been a worse particular incident, just thinking back, that you faced? Dealing with racism. Dealing with racism, for me, every incident that I've encountered is equally bad. Um, something as shallow as someone, I went to Sephora and I wanted to get mascara and lashes. and the girl was um, a different race. I don't want to say what she was, but she's like, I don't think we have any, because I said, I want something to blend. I want it to be extravagant, but I want it to match my natural lashes. And she goes, I mean, you're just, your, your lashes are just so kinky. You know, like you're black, you know, it just, it's not going to blend with anybody like, you know, like me, like on me, it would look really good and blend. But with you, you know, maybe you should just try to like use Vaseline and maybe straighten them out before, you know, putting lashes on. And I'm like, bitch, really? <laughs> Like, so, I mean, and that's one of the, you know, that's a very shallow end of what I've experienced. But that alone, as small as it is, it's enough to send somebody home and, 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 and cry. And I'm very, very sensitive, very emotional. So I didn't like it. And I really wanted to slap the piss out of her, but I did, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> so in an instance like that, how do you cope or deal with that right then and there? I know what you felt like you wanted to do. Obviously, that emotionally, that's what you wanted to do, but logically, you did not do that. I did not do that. I went, I didn't use her help. I went and I picked out the lashes that I wanted and the mascara that I wanted, and I purchased it, and I walked out of the store. Trying to explain yourself to someone that's just ignorant, um, you'll never get anywhere with them. I've learned I can stand in front of someone of another color, another race, all day until they're black and blue, and I can't do anything 
to convince them that we're the same or to make them, you know, ease up on the racism. I think that's something that starts at, in the home. So I've even had friends who were afraid to bring me home because their family doesn't really, you know, like black people. Mm. So I've had like mixed friends who were more white than black or more Asian than black. And they they told me like, I don't know, we've never had like a black girl over, you know? And I really think that racism starts in the home. It's something that comes from our ancestors. So it's something that I can't change. It's bigger than me. I just give it to God because I can't change it. Have you traveled overseas? I have traveled overseas. I've been to, you know, I've never been to Europe. Okay. <laughs> I've been to several different islands. I've been to uh, Mexico. I've been to Australia. I've been to Mystique Island. I've been a lot of places, but I've never been to Europe. So I these, were, these were quick trips or any significant length of time at any of these places you were at? Um, most of them were, most of my time overseas has been quick trips on tour. Um, I did a lot of background singing and I um, performed with people like T-Pain, Lil Wayne, T.I. But the, the one trip that I would say is probably a different type of experience was when I went to Mystique Island, I stayed at Tommy Hilfiger's house. Um, uh, and he, we stayed in like his bungalows and he's, he normally does that. He hosts like, you know, close friends and family. And it was, it was a very, very good experience. Um, especially since we're talking about racism going on how back in the day, like they said, oh, he doesn't want black people to wear their wear his clothes. And when I first was invited, I was like, is he going to put me out in the middle of the night or leave me at the front door because everybody else that I'm with, you know, is like another race. But he did not. He was very welcoming. He was very warm. And I had a great time. Now, in those different quick trips that you visited in all those different places for this next question, um, uh, did you face any racism outside of the United States visiting these other places and locations? I must say that I have not faced any severe or anything that I picked up on, any racism or any even slight racist events or behavior from any other country that I've visited. I haven't experienced that, no. Um, pretty much every, there, the crazy thing is you would think that in America you would have better encounters with people that are racist and not overseas. That's where, you know, we're completely different. So you think, okay, that's where I'm gonna have the issue, but actually they're way more embracing to blacks and way more inviting, way more nice than what I experience here in America. America's we're tainted when it comes to race. Now, what about, uh, and just to be fair, before I move on to the next question, you mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in the United States compared to these other locations. Correct. So just keeping that relative there, but, mm -hmm. yeah. I understand the feeling that you've, you've, you've felt being comparing overseas places to the United States. I mean, hmm. for a couple of <laughs> a couple of years in my life, I used to tell people, "I'm like, I think I'm gonna move overseas. I don't like the secrets of this country. I don't like the unknown of America. I don't like." not knowing or thinking, you know, when I wake up another September 11th or another person not really servicing me right at a restaurant, you know, as opposed to when I go to these other countries and they're so nice, I'm like, I'm going to go somewhere else where they can appreciate me and they can accept me and they embrace me. And I, of course, I'm still here. So I did not go. <laughs> I did not go. But honestly, I think I deal with um, the minority issue a little bit more than I deal with the race issue. Um, I'm still climbing. I'm still, you know, going on an uphill battle. I'm not rich yet. I have not, you know, I'm no millionaire. I'm not there. And I think I even experience that within my own race, within mm. other blacks or privileged people, no matter your color. Um, even with number 45, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, he hates minorities because of the color of their skin. To me, it's a money thing. I feel like the issue is I have more money than you. You don't have this. You can be black, purple, blue, green, yellow, but it, you could be a white man to another white man. But if you don't have the money that 45 or anybody that hangs with 45 has, then you're going to get treated like shit. And I think I stand a little more firm on the belief of there being a difference in what your bank account says as opposed to like the color thing, mm. except for when it comes to police brutality. I do think that that's a color thing. Now, just curious, music wise. Have you faced any obstacles due to racism or colorism? Uh, Music-wise, 
I have not faced any of that. I think I haven't because um, I like to do a lot of pop music, and I like to when I actually write music, I like to write like a country person. But I think that pop music, popular music today, believe it or not, it's urban. It's rap. It's like gutter rap. Um, it's not like in 2000, 2001, when Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears were, you know, it was more like, you know, your dance bubblegum pop. Mm. Now, pop popular music is urban. It's hip hop. So I think I have an advantage on being a pop star now just because it's our time. <laughs> it's our moment. Versus right 20 years ago. Versus 20 years ago, you know, that wasn't really, you know, accepted back then. Um, Nelly was, you know, he's super pop to me. He's super hip hop, but he's super pop. So today we don't have any Nellies because popular music is, like I said, it's a little more gutter. It's heavy. It's like really, really urban. And I think I love it. I think it gives me a better advantage on, you know, being able to reach Billboard a little bit faster as opposed to before. Back in the day, that was just underground music. Mm. It wasn't really on the charts. Now, give us some advice, if you have any, for somebody watching this and going through the motions of uh, dealing with maybe a certain obstacle of racism, maybe what you've described, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, and being judged for who they are, their ethnicity, their nationality, their race. Any words you would say to somebody watching this right now that maybe has, is going through the motions currently or has gone through the motions and may face that at some point again? My advice for anybody, you know, trying to come up in life, not just the industry that may go through issues with racism, is to just stand firm in who you are. Um, only God can judge us. You know, your mother and your father, whomever takes care of you, you know, has, has molded you into being a beautiful person. I think they should just know that God didn't make any mistakes. So if you ever have a doubt in who you are or you ever have you know, a desire to be something else just so you can be accepted, don't do that because God knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, let's look at Colin Kaepernick, for example. He's he's like me. He's mixed. He's a light-skinned guy, and he took a stand, and he faced, he didn't know what he was facing. He didn't know the repercussions or the consequences of his decision, and in turn, he's way more successful today as an athlete, as a philanthropist, as an investor, as a, a, someone, as a spokesperson than he was before he was just another football player, you know? So sometimes, all the time, I feel like if you just stay true to who you are and just be exactly who God made you to be, that's gonna be your ticket. That's your golden ticket to being great. That's what's gonna separate you. That's what's gonna get you to be a billionaire or a millionaire or get the world to see you. So just be exactly who you are. Don't ever second guess your color. It's something that you can't control. God wouldn't have made us something that you know, we can change, then it wouldn't be his work, it'd be our work, and we don't know what we're doing, so. <laughs>